this all uh, I have done, of course. I mean, CV, as, as I said from the definition, A is mu n minus PV, uh, G minus PV, okay. So that is what U minus TS. So explicitly I have shown here that A is mu, uh, G minus PV is basically A, that is U minus TS. And therefore A could be written as mu n minus PV, where uh, you, we have already shown earlier that this mu is in, in we have we already expressed the fugacity right z equals to the mu by kt and the power mu is uh, kt ln z and that we have put here and then q is pv by kt and therefore uh, we have expressed this uh, here pv we have expressed in terms of this and then probably we uh, came to this which is kt ln z to the power n minus kt ln um, this one is ln of this is grand partition function right q is basically ln of grand partition function and therefore if you so a expression is minus kt ln grand partition function by z to the power n and uh, in the canonical ensemble is minus uh, a is minus kt ln qn right so these are the kind of similar expressions that we have yesterday we we we, we uh, not yesterday you know, on monday we, we we talked about it and therefore the s is basically from your thermodynamical formula u minus a by t and this is basically uh you you have the expression for you what is you what is you what is you you have uh, expression for you somewhere where is that you This is actually, in a sense, a bit difficult in a sense that you have expressions at various places and then you have to recall them somewhere. Anyway, so basically U minus A, what is U? Uh, a is this, of course, I mean, A is, a is this, uh, in this, A is this, and U is, can you, can you tell me where is U? Uh, u minus a is this. Uh, can you can you get the get the get the expression? U a a is this right? Iterate iterate iterate. U to a ita thay to u to aget pejirate. Ita na this one right? Kethi square okay. So kt square, um, k, oh, by t, that's why Monty goes away. Okay, kt, del q, del t, this, this, and this. Okay, and then, uh, you know, this can be written like this because if you, uh, here, uh, it is shown that uh, del, del t of qt is basically this term, which is nothing but this. If you take k common, then the remaining part is nothing but this. Okay, so this is it. So this this can be found in the path here. Okay, so this is the expression for the entropy here, and then uh, d of the uh, d of PV, uh, d of PV is basically P D V plus mu D N plus S D T, and S is from this expression. Okay, uh, what I'm asking you, you can obtain this. Okay. That you can show that d of pv and that is why uh, so obtain the following now uh, from equation 25 from equation 25 um, and expression for a mu n minus pv you can obtain this okay you can try you can obtain this d of pv is pdv plus mu dn plus sdt and of course then s should be uh, s should be uh, d pv by dt of course mu and pv has to be constant Okay, so this is the expression for S, you can write in this way. So once you know the grand partition function for a system, then you can do this derivative with keeping this and this constant, and then thus you can get the entropy, and you can get other uh, quantities. Now let us look at some examples, okay? Now, um, uh, we will study a couple of simple problems to see how the, this Q potential that works. As a, the um, Helmholtz free energy works in kind of canonical ensemble. 
let us see how this Q potential works. The first problem that we'll consider, of course, generally we consider classical ideal gas. Here also, let us consider the classical ideal gas. Now, <clears throat> we have already seen that the partition function QNVT, okay, is a system of this system could be written like this, that we have seen many times. Do we, for classical gas, we divide by n factorial because of the particles are delocalized in the system. And that's why we uh, divide by n factorial, we cannot distinguish them. Now, um, we should note that n factorial in the denominator arises from the fact that particles containing the gas are indistinguishable. Now, since the particles are delocalized, they can be anywhere in the space available to them. Consequently, Q1 will be directly proportional to V. I think we have already discussed all these things, right? Then Q1 VT, Q1 is a function of V and T. Uh, so, most of it, is this clear, this part? N factorial, you know, that we have been doing so long, uh, so, so since long. But uh, this explanation, uh, do you, do you, you know, are you, uh, are you okay with this ex explanation? That now, since the particles are delocalized, they can be anywhere in the space available to them, and consequently, N1, Q1 uh, would be directly proportional to V. Yes, sir. I think this we have already uh, in a we, we have already um, I think um, explain not explain uh, we already had that kind of idea earlier also right? Hag were volume calculated time a Korea cylinder. Maybe to calculate the entropy or something like that, most probably. So basically, it, is, it should be directly proportional because when we volume increases, then of course it increases the number of micro states will increase. And I think we had a greater, we had discussion in greater detail about how why that V, uh, no, number of micro will be proportional to V, and therefore uh, the potential function also should be proportional to V. Okay, then Q1 VT is basically this proportional to V, and also there should be a function of temperature because some function of it, it is also function of temperature, so function. Of but Ft is a function of temperature alone. So this is the partition for a function of a single particle. Mm, of course, I mean canonical. Okay. Now, uh, then we can obtain the grand partition function because you, you already have the expression for grand partition function, right? Somewhere here. Where is that grand partition function? You have already uh, expressed the grand partition function somewhere here, right? This one, right? This is the grand partition function. Uh, so in the grand, this partition function is a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, not a simple Q. It is a, you know, Q of with different kind of notation. Okay, this Q and this Q are different. This is a canonical partition function, and this is the grand canonical partition function. Okay, uh, in in short, we say grand partition function. So this is a, this is a Fugacid to the power n r Q n r here. So keeping n fixed, we get the canonical uh, partition function. And then uh, we uh, sum over all uh, possible ends and get the grand partition. So we use this one. We uh, so here. So we uh, borrow that uh, expression that uh, grand partition function is sum over n r equals zero to infinity z to the n r fugacity to the n r and this one. And now this one, single particle partition function is known here, and therefore this one should be to the power n by n factorial. Again, n factorial, you can, uh, you know, you have the same logic uh, for putting this in r factorial here, for n particle partition function, and therefore if you combine this uh, all together, then z, v, this z, and this one is vft, so vft whole to the power n r by n. And this is nothing but kind of exponential, right? This can, you can write this in the exponential. Okay, assuming that the convergence will take this. Okay, so you can write it in the exponential. Again, I'm repeating that assuming the convergence uh, is preserved here, uh, assuming that we can write it as exponential. Then you see ln of q, ln of this grand partition function is small q, right? Q potential. So yeah, then and that should be of course ln exponential. This means this z uh, v f t. So the Q potential is this, and therefore Q equals to Z VFT. 
And Q is again PV by, K, PV by KT, right? That we have already seen. And therefore, PV by KT goes to ZVFT, and therefore P can be written in this form, Z KT F of T. And N, we have already, if you recall, N is Z DQ DZ that we have already N. What is this N? This is average number that we have already expressed earlier. But here I have done the calculation. This one. No, 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 not this one. Yeah. Well, this is the n bar that is okay but del del z z del del z is that z yeah this oh yeah yes yeah, yeah. Mm. This one. You see that uh, uh, del Q del Z is this because Q is this, ln of this, ln of this grand partition function. Del del Z is this. I think uh, yesterday also, or on Monday also, I explained verbally. So if you take the derivative in R Z to the power n minus 1 and this, and then if you multiply by Z, then this Z will be multiplied here because summation is over R and S. The Z to the power n R and uh, this and therefore this entire thing becomes uh average end, right because in this summation nr is there and some of nr of course nr is there some of nr is summation over r this is the n, n, n average. so basically n average you do not denote by n in general and that is z del q del n del q del z z del q del z and that one is uh, here, yeah. So n equals to this this z del q del z at v and t constant, and that is equals to q is this, and therefore del z del del z of z v f t, and um, it is equals to z v f t because v t com v t are constant. And therefore, if you take the derivative, this comes out del z del z1 to z vft. This is the expression for n. Okay. And u, now you remember, equal that k t square del q del t. And uh, that is, of course, q is z vft. And therefore, obviously, this is k t square and f prime t, because in this case, j and v constant, l del t of t, so f prime t. This is the expression of for your energy average energy okay and so now onwards it is denoted by u as n bar is denoted by n e bar is denoted by u then a is you know g minus pv mu n minus pv and mu n you know that it is um mu in terms of fugacity is this um, and n multiplied and pv is again same thing that we have already seen uh, and q you express j v f t and therefore a expression is this and that is stored in 30 and s uh, is u minus a by t k t z f from t so everything you express in terms of you know v z and uh, t f of t okay so now you see if you think if you so this way you can express all the thermodynamical quantities in terms of this a s uh, u n and so on now if you go back and if you look at this expression say 27 uh, 27 is this p equals to this uh, p and 28 28 is n equals to j p f t so this expression 27 and remember this n equals to z b f t okay if you take these two expressions and take the ratio if you p by n equals to k t by v if you take the ratio you see um, 20 this one 27 28 p by n equals to uh, f t f t cancels z z cancels k t by v right and therefore 
you get the equation of state u equals to n k t, right? And another one is again if you take the ratio of 28 and 29, 28 and 29, say u by n means average energy per uh, uh, what what is n per particle, right? Then uh, average energy per particle that should be equals to how much uh, this by this. Okay, so that is the expression you have written. UN is this and U is so everything is in terms of T, K, N, and F, uh, T basically, and N, 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 K. And CV, of course, I mean, you do the derivative, keep on doing the derivative, you have three terms, and this is the expression for the specific T. Now, in the simple cases, the function FT turns out to be proportional to certain power of T in most of the cases, okay, simple cases. Then FT is T to the power N. Then obviously you can you know uh, write u u is given by this and therefore uh, if you uh, do the kind of derivative uh, then it will have you will have u as n times n k t okay and c v will have n times k n and uh, of course we, you you will have uh, p v equals to n k t anyway so p equals to n k t by v and therefore you get P equals to u by n v and u by v is the energy density you see the p pressure is 1 by n times energy density right and uh, we may recall that n is 3 by 2 so just uh, you know it is a f of t is power of 3 by 2 uh, corresponding to the non-relativistic gas uh, in case of non-relativistic non uh, gas in that case p equals to two third of u P is two third of u energy density that for gas, uh, you know, no, for non, -relative, non relativistic gas, this expression is also very familiar with us, right? P equals to two third of the energy density. So known relation is reproduced here. Finally, uh, if we uh, use the relations 26 and 31 and eliminate Z, we may obtain A S in terms of N V T, right? Because you have so many equations, so many um you know the, the, so many macroscopic parameters uh, that in terms of z this this but basically we want to express them in terms of nvt then we can eliminate we can take any two of them uh, known quantities and then eliminate the z and eventually we can get all the quantities in terms of nvt okay so if you, if some uh, a problem is given to you then uh, you can just uh, have uh, the grand partition function uh, or um, if, if it is a very simplistic uh, one uh, like uh, v f of t and if you know the you know, functional dependence of uh, t uh, then obviously you can use these expressions and you can obtain uh, various uh, statistical quantities. Now next problem we considered it was a kind of delocalized problem now we consider something which is a kind of localized one. Here we consider that a system of you know independent localized particles, a model which in some respect approximates the solid. You know that, right? I mean, solid is considered to be a collection of harmonic oscillators. Uh, I mean, or the particles connected by springs which are oscillating among the main position. That's how you simply, uh, or that is the simplistic model uh, for a solid. And mathematically, the problem is similar to that of a system of harmonic oscillators, right? In either case, the ma microscopic entities constituting the system are mutually distinguishable because they are, uh, as I said many times earlier, that they are having uh, specific sites and therefore they are uh, distinguished. And hence, you write here Qn as Q1 to the power bt to the power n in view of localized nature of the particles the single particle partition function is essentially independent of the volume occupied by the system right so uh, therefore you can simply write q1 vt as some function of temperature in case of uh, you know uh, uh, in case of uh, localized systems okay uh, or system uh, with localized particles in that case volume is not going to play any role 
and therefore q1 vt you can write it as proportional to uh, some or or it can be expressed as a function of temperature alone okay and then of course the grand partition function uh, you have the uh, you know expression for that in terms of fugacity and uh, single particle canon, canon, canonical partition function and you can write it here simply you can do the same thing combine them together finally and then it is to the power nr and nr is running from zero to infinity and again assuming that this converges and then and therefore this would be less than one and therefore you can write it as it's a series if it's less than one it has to be because allah physically it has to converge and therefore it can be written as one by one minus z phi t and then p is you know pv by kt is q so p is kt by v q and the, what is the q q is ln of this and therefore ln of this and therefore it is kt by v ln of this uh, grand partition function is because it is the denominator so to the power minus one so if you take the ln of this uh, minus one minus one comes out kt ln one minus z phi t so this is the expression for the pressure for the system where the particles are localized and volume is not going to play any role and therefore we recall uh, from this from the earlier page we recall the pressure expression t is this since both z and t are intensive variables and the right hand side okay the right hand side you see and wh what value of pressure do you expect in this case by the way can i ask you a question so what value of pressure do you expect in this case where the system uh, consists of particles which are localized Can you tell me any of you? Sir, zero. You will let manna. Sir, dependu. Dependu. Yes. Mm, zero. Right. Right. Absolutely. So this has to be the we uh, has to, we expect that to be zero. But how do you explain from this expression? In this expression, you explain in in this form. That since j and t are the intensive variables it is not going to increase or decrease as that as the volume increases or decreases because your you, system is maintained somewhere and and the right hand side of this this one uh, is is inversely proportional to v and therefore in the thermodynamic limit because you know the statistics is valid it reproduces the correct result as statistics at, at thermodynamic limit and therefore as v tends to infinity this tends to zero and therefore the pressure this system is that is what is expected as the Kendu said. Now uh, let us look at other quantities like n, n is z dq dz, and uh, q of course is this. And therefore, uh, if you do on the this uh, you know simple derivative, then you get this one. This is ln one by this and z phi t, and therefore n equals to z phi t by one minus z phi t. And then you can, uh, you know, uh, get phi t also in terms of n anyway. So u is this, and therefore in this case, so in this case also you can evaluate all the quantities. Now u is um, uh, this, uh, and takes this 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 form, and eventually this form is just true function. Now a, of course, again, uh, you know, you just put the value of uh, this. Um, is that u? this one uh, and eventually you can get just you you just do uh, by yourself these steps and a also you get like this and s you put the values for this system eventually you will obtain this and we have stored this in 38 and 39. now as i said equation 13 if you borrow equation 13 then you can express phi t uh, or z actually z phi t you see, uh, from equation this n equals to z phi t by one minus z phi t, and therefore z phi t is n by n plus one, and equals to. Now, if you divide by uh, n on 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 numerator denominator, then one by one plus one by n, and you take one one plus one by n whole to the power minus one, which will be one minus one by n, right? So this and. Um, uh well let us keep this relation okay then if n tends to infinity then of course it will give you one 
and therefore z phi t is one and then therefore phi t is one by z or z equals to one by phi. That probably will come that. Now, well, then uh, u uh, u by n. Okay, again in this expression you you, uh, you can you have a u you have n here and then you eventually get the, this form in terms of phi t and a by n is again you know you can just uh, do this by yourself and get this expression if you uh, go for s by n k then you'll get this expression now also you have to do a lot of uh, calculations firstly you have to check my calculations and secondly some calculations are not done explicitly so you can do it by yourself okay just put the values and it will automatically come okay and also you have to check uh, that uh, i mean this is kind of a uh, uh, check uh, for uh, all of us that assume phi t the uh, phi t is the function of time in the uh, canonical ensemble for a single particle right and and this one i'm talking about is uh, for the solids for the localized uh, localized entities in the in the system right and that is of course i mean in this example is a solid where uh, the entities are kind of harmonic oscillators now single particle now, what is phi t? Phi t is q1 t, right? q1 v t. And v has, doesn't have any role here, and therefore it is, it is phi t. And that phi t, if you do the quantum calculation uh, for uh, uh, oscillator, then single particle partition function, if you recall, do you remember that this, that this one by or two sine hyperbolic of uh, h cut omega by kt? Uh, that means beta h cut omega whole inverse this was the single partic particle partition function for our oscillator do you remember that yes sir okay if you remember that or if you don't remember that go back and check that this is the expression for the single particle uh, canonical uh, function um, for uh, 1d oscillator and now if you use this one and you have all the expressions you are uh, you, uh, are at at your hand uh, and uh, therefore you can use this and uh, you can calculate all the thermodynamical or macroscopic quantities and you can check whether the quantities that you that you obtain here uh, do they match with the earlier uh, calculated expressions on okay and also similarly uh, if you uh, i think you remember that if you treat the oscillators classically then the function of temperature or single particle partition function that turned out to be one by beta h cross omega so do you remember that the canonical partition function for a single oscillator if you treat the oscillator classically uh, then that canonical partition function for single oscillator is it turned out to be one by beta h cross omega do you remember that yes sir yes sir okay, now again and now you do second set of calculation is you use this one and try to calculate use these expressions relations and then try to calculate all the physical quantities and see whether they do match with your earlier results or not you will find eventually please do it at home um, take your time do it uh, at home and it is not difficult uh, it is just a matter of time to do do it and eventually you will find that yes it does you know reproduce the results that you obtain uh, using the canonical ensemble approach and uh, therefore uh, till now all is well now uh, let us uh, talk about something which is uh, kind of interesting that let us study about the problem of liquid vapor equilibrium okay now consider a uh, single actually the whole point is why do you need this grand canonical ensemble that you will realize okay now let us study the problem of the solid vapor equilibrium okay now consider a single component system having two phases one is solid and another is vapor in equilibrium that means they do coexist right and equilibrium 
Uh, and then some part of the solid and some part will be a kind of vapor and there will be a co coexistence in equilibrium. Now, um, uh, that is contained in a closed vessel of volume V at temperature T, say. Okay, so let us study the problem of a solid vapor equilibrium. Consider a single component system having two phases, solid and vapor in equilibrium and, and contained in a closed vessel of V, volume and temperature T. Since the phases are free to exchange particles, a state of mutual equilibrium would, you know, would, would require that their chemical potentials be equal, right? Since this is kind of their chemical inequilibrium, that these two phases, they, they are free to exchange the particles. So, so there will be, uh, uh, there, there, exi there will exist an equilibrium, which is of course a chemical equilibrium, right? And therefore, the fugacity should be the same in equilibrium, fugacity should be the same for both the um, phases, right? Whether it is a gaseous phase or whether it is a, um, it is a solid phase, okay? Then if you recall, I, I think you remember that N, general expression for N, for gaseous system, of course, not the oscillator system, I'm talking about the gas system. In the gas system, if you recall that um, N, this one, right? Z V F T, right? This is the general expression. So if you recall that, yeah. So this is for the gaseous phase, right? Then uh, if you uh, for gaseous phase, if you say the fugacity is Z of G, which is N G particles in gaseous phase by volume G. Ft and this Vg generally we assume as a volume V, right? So where Ng is the number of particles, the gaseous phase, and Vg is the number is, is the volume occupied by it. Now you recall the equation, as I said, that we'll need it uh, later. That Z phi t is one minus one by n, and this one a if n goes to infinity, very large actually, it is one, right? And therefore, um, uh, in case of solids, uh, in case of solid. Uh, if you recall that Z phi uh, t is to one, one minus one by n that we already saw, and if n becomes large, then it goes one, and therefore Z s or solid it is one by phi t, right? In case of solid, we assume the that uh, temperature dependence as phi t, right? So, so this I store as forty two. So this I store as forty one, and this I store as forty. Now you see if they are uh, these two phases they coexist. That means they are in equilibrium. Then the fugacity for both the both these should be same, right? And therefore this should be equal to this. And that I have done. That equating forty one and forty two equation forty one and equation forty two. In both cases the fugacity should be same. As the fugacity should be same at equilibrium. So N G by V G fifty on a phi t, and therefore N G by V G equals to F T by phi t. This equilibrium particle density. Now, if the density in the vapor phase is sufficiently low and the temperature of the system is sufficiently high, then vapor pressure P equals to P V by K T equals to uh, P equals to N K T by V G. Yeah. So this is a simple expression. And therefore, uh, you write uh, this uh, Ng by Vg is basically this, so Kt, Ft by phi t. Anyway. Now again, we recall Ng by Vg equals to Ft by phi t. Uh, in typical cases, as I said, that Vg, generally we write it as V, right? Then Ng by V is Ft by, F, uh, F, uh, F, uh, Ft by phi t in the equilibrium state. But, so in the equilibrium state, it is, um, uh, I mean, uh, this vapor and solids they exchange uh, their this one uh, densities, but in this case you see this is the ng number of particles in the gaseous phase, and this is the volume for the gaseous phase. And then if it goes to solid, then certainly so basically n by v is of this order. Uh, if it goes to solid, that means particles come come more closer together. And therefore, the volume will, of course, I mean, uh, decrease uh, slowly. Uh, and therefore, the number density will increase. And therefore, this number density, which is turned out to be Ft by phi t, 
uh, in the gaseous phase and then this n by v has to be much much greater than f t by phi t because the number density will increase if you go undergo a transition from gaseous phase to the solid phase then definitely the number density will be larger and therefore this uh, this one should be n by v should be much much greater than f t by phi t and therefore eventually you can say n must be much much greater than v f t by phi t so this or in other words you know if you uh, decrease the temperature say n by v if you define as f of tc by v of tc uh, then uh, you have to uh, have uh, you know uh, the temperature which has to be t less than tc okay to so go to the solid phase from the gaseous phase okay so this is so kind of this this is the kind of phase transition that you are that is uh, that is uh, you know happening uh, and uh, or you can you can you can uh, you can have an idea uh, about kind of uh, you know phase transition uh, as the number of particles is larger uh, than this uh, value the okay, function of if it is known v is known so this value this gives you kind of uh, critical uh, kind of temperature uh, or critical um, uh, parameter, um, you know, uh, which uh, tells you whether it is it is the gaseous phase or it is going to uh, transit over the solid phase. Okay. Now uh, you can look at the density and energy fluctuation in grand uh, canonical ensemble. Now there is a calculation I have already done the uh, you know fluctuation in energy in case of canonical ensemble so here you have the two things energy as well as particle fluctuation and therefore please do this calculation by yourself just follow criteria and eventually uh, uh, if you do the calculations you will obtain an expression for the uh, for the energy fluctuation in the grand uh, uh, canonical ensemble um, under the grand, grand canonical ensemble you will have a fluctuation of energy of the system which is the fluctuation in energy in the canonical ensemble that, that expression you get in addition to that you have something a particle fluctuation and this okay this is the extra term you get in case of grand canonical ensemble and 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 this term plays a very crucial role because as such you know in normal conditions this is uh, small this is also small eventually the energy fluctuation is pretty small uh, and therefore uh, everything will be the average quantity and uh, the, the, the fluctuation will be pretty small however there are situations where the fluctuation uh, will be pretty large okay so I, I'm just uh, you know reading out this one the equation 44 as I said is very important very instructive uh, it tells us the mean square fluctuation in the energy E of a given system in the grand canonical ensemble is equal to the value it would have in the canonical ensemble that means this plus uh, our contribution arising from the fact that new particle number n is also fluctuating again under ordinary circumstances the relative root mean square fluctuations in the energy density of the system would be practically negligible as we have done in case of canonical ensemble here also you can find so that relative in normal situations the relative uh, fluctuation is pretty negligible however in the region of the phase transitions um unusually large fluctuations in the value of this variable can arise by virtue of the second term in the expect in the expression 41 that is the particle fluctuation on this particle fluctuation and this term you get a huge fluctuation when you are close to phase transition okay that probably we will experience them the practical uh, you know manifestation of this uh, may be experienced will be experiencing um, uh, in case of bose condensation and so on there so these ensembles are pretty useful you know to deal with the phase transitions in case of both gases and so on so today uh, i thought of uh, you know stopping here and uh, and the next day means tomorrow tomorrow we'll uh, talk about 
the the density matrix approach okay. and uh, and someone uh, is that suman suman are you around acha tomar kono question thak lage bolo tar pore dekhchi moshumi जाए so this particle fluctuation in case of phase transit normally uh, what it does it does not affect that much okay if you take the relative fluctuation what is what do you mean by relative fluctuation this delta e square bar by e, e square um, uh, e bar square right so that is what you you say the relative fluctuation okay that we have done in case of classical i mean canonical ensemble uh, case right so that relative fluctuation generally you know and in, in uh, unless it is a uh, abnormal things are happening then this fluctuation is pretty small okay so uh, then you use canonical grand canonical doesn't matter okay it will spit out uh, the ex exact result okay i mean similar is as we have seen that uh, that, that it shows the similar result in case of canonical ensemble and micro canonical ensemble because the relative energy fluctuation is pretty small and if you so if you so in this case that relative fluctuation is pretty small and then you can say yes the result that we will obtain uh, using this can uh, this approach grand grand approach grand canonical approach uh, it is the same as in case of canonical approach however in 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 phase transitions because you see that the phase transition means that the, the particles are moving from one state to another right in that case there will be a fluctuation okay particle fluctuation both condensation say for example that will be talking about so there are particles which is going to condense uh, state okay so there is a kind of phase transition is going to happen and lots of particles are going to uh, take part uh, in some some uh, different kind of uh, behavior okay uh, in different state is going to be frozen somewhere okay so so this in in such cases says uh, the the fluctuation the particle fluctuation is um, uh, probably pretty high and also also this derivative with respect to the particle could be pretty high and then in that case the energy fluctuation would appear to be pretty large because of this particle fluctuation okay at in, during phase transition that's why grand canonical ensemble is required only to uh, you know to deal with uh, the systems undergoing phase transition okay so the what is uh, again I, I i stress on the fact that what i'm saying that this is the extra term that we have due to the particle fluctuation and this term becomes pretty large uh, near the phase transition and that is why this grand canonical ensemble approach is essential and you know, to deal with the systems which undergoes phase transition yes sir okay uh, uh, okay so so uh, next day the, hmm, i will uh, do uh i will uh, work on uh, this uh, density uh, density approach okay so you can deal uh, the systems using the in you know, quantum mechan mechanics that is the kind of density approach okay density matrix approach and uh, mean it okay acha amake kyu ekjon bolchilo is that suman আমি কিছু রেকগনাইজ করতে পারিনি ওকে সো হি ওয়াজ সেইং দ্যাট ইনস্টেড অফ গিভিং এন্ড এন্ড আই অ্যাপ্রিশিয়েট দ্যাট ইনস্টেড অফ গিভিং আ হোমওয়ার্ক অন হোয়াট আই हैव অলরেডি গন থ্রু রাদার ইট ইজ বেটার টু গিভ সামথিং डिफरेंट হুইচ মে বি ইউজফুল ইন ফিউচার ওকে দ্যাট ইজ হোয়াট সুমন সেড and i think that's a quite uh, good suggestion okay and he was talking about uh, giving uh, 
this density matrix approach as the project or homework. Yeah. And what I'm thinking, just let me see, okay. Density. Okay, I think um, um, density matrix approach. Okay, I think that would not be bad actually. Hello, density matrix approach to project is available. Home assignment. Hello. Dibendu is Bolcho. Dibendu Mosumi, Dibendu is Bolcho. Sundarachina. Hello. Mosumi Bolo, Dibendu Yakurish. Me, it is old Slaman and Dinista Janinak to Apni to the Halka of a bullet and Tarpore quarter than the Shubida. It will decide. Amito, Amitam Niki for a water. আমি তো এমনিতেই পড়াবো তোমরা পড়ো সঙ্গে সঙ্গে হ্যাঁ তাহলে আমার প্রবলেম বাকিরা বলুক হ্যাঁ আচ্ছা তোমরা কালকে স